How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, I haven't done a video in a while, so trying to get back into things uh, and all that stuff. What I got here is a piece of 12 inches long, four inch in diameter ductile iron. Um, this is a job for a viewer and a friend, uh, Ray Goff uh, Razor, or Razor Ray, you may know him as, if you've met him at the bash. Ray has an issue on his John Deere 210 LE, the tilt cylinder for the bucket. So he has only one cylinder that, roll, that rolls the bucket. And this is the gland. Started leaking real bad and all. So he has acquired the seals and he sent me the gland. This gland uh, would go into the, let's pretend that's a cylinder, goes in this way. Then there's a snap ring, goes in the cylinder, and kind of holds this in place, and then this nut goes over that. He had a, said he had a seven foot cheater bar on that to get that nut off. And the only way he could get it off was to drill in here and then hit it with a chisel and break the nut. So he's asked me to make him a nut. He wanted some extra material, so this is what he decided to get. We're not gonna fix this any more than this. It's just a few file, little file work he did and fixed it up. Uh, anyway, measuring this, this is a 70 millimeter by two millimeter thread on there. Uh, so we're gonna make this ring out of this. We'll face it, I'm gonna turn it down for a little bit put a part line in it, then take it over the bandsaw and saw it off. But it'll be already turned down to size, and then I can just throw it in the chuck and do the internal work. And then we'll mill these notches in it for the spanner wrench. Now, this nut only tightens this up, and pulls this in place against a snap ring. It's just to hold it in place. There's no securing for rotation in there. Uh, the cylinder only goes in and out, so yeah, probably doesn't really need it. He might put a screw in it, uh, a grub screw to stop it from rotating, but yeah, I don't know if it really needs it. That's, you know, original design didn't have that, so. Anyway, we're going to uh, get that made. This was dialed in to within about 15, 20 thousandths. It's, uh, like I said, it's not round really. <laughs> Let me give it a little turn. Turn here, and uh, that actually looks pretty darn good. We're not going to do any heavy machining. Uh, we'll take off about a quarter inch total on here uh, for about three quarters of an inch, and that's all. Uh, and we'll face it, and we'll put a center hole in it.
nice there, but the finish is really smooth, really nice.
Come out very nice. Actually, very nice. Uh, I probably should chamfer this edge a little bit more. I reached in from the inside and chamfered a little bit, but it could use a little more. There we go. Now we'll just mill the slots. And I think we'll charge him about $500, I think. Sounds good? $500. All right, I need to put these four notches in there. And I think I'll leave this big break out. I, I won't do that. So I'm going to mill that one. Then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I have a little pe little flat parallel down in there. I'll set that on. That will register that. And then we're just going to kind of guess a little bit and get 90 so I can do the other two. It's a good idea if I turn the camera on. These are about 170,000 feet. And they're uh, 3 8 wide, so I'll just use a 3 8 10 now. And I'm just sliding it against my stop over here that I registered on. And uh, there we go. Just going to make those both the same height roughly above the vise. Pretty good by eye. is complete I think came out really nice and uh, we'll get it shipped uh, back to Ray here thanks you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next one